Thank you all very, very much for coming out tonight. My name is Bob Bocock, and I'm the environmental investigator that works with Aaron Brockovich around the country. Um, I have a science background, predominantly in water utility management and water utility operations. Um, I'm a licensed water treatment operator, so I understand a lot of the technologies we're going to be talking about tonight. More volume? Okay, this is a strange room, and I'm feeling really weird walking on this wood up here. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about what's going on with the chemical spill here in the Charleston area and West Virginia American Water Company, and let you as a community have an opportunity to vent your frustration, talk about the problems that you've encountered, and ask very important questions, and get unfiltered, unedited answers. Um, we want to talk openly about what's happened. It's a very unfortunate situation. This is not a situation that um, Virginia American Water Company wanted or desired, um, but it's a situation we all collectively find ourselves in. And the answers that you're going to get tonight hopefully will help you as individuals deal with it better. And that's the objective of the meeting tonight. So thank you all very, very much for coming out. I'll explain the format here in just a second. Thank you all very, very much for coming out. Um, at, at a uh, late notice, we actually were able to get this room at about 9 o'clock this morning when they got back in City Hall. Um, they were closed over the weekend. So thank you all for coming out on short notice, and uh, we're here to answer your questions. And before I get started, yes, ma'am? I just want to let you know that we're West Virginia. West Virginia. 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 Um, <laughs> I said West Virginia when I started, but it's West Virginia American Water Company. Um, wow. Sorry about that. And I will, We're very uh, sensitive about that. Yes. And you should be. I got family in Rodeo. Oh, there you go. Uh, well, thank you very much for that. Um, the format tonight is um, what I would like to do is this is your meeting. And this is the community's investigation. We've all heard conflicting information come out of the press. Um, we've heard 1,000 gallons, 4,000 gallons, 5,000 gallons, maybe up to 40,000 gallons. Where did it go? Why did it take so long? What happened? What's going to happen? What can we expect with the flushing program? How long is the chemical going to remain in our drinking water system? And what can we expect in the future? Those are all things we anticipate. We've actually seen online a lot of your questions about wildlife and things like that. And so we want to, the reason we've given you two hours tonight is to go through those and to make sure you leave here satisfied and, and have all your questions answered. I am once again a scientist from the water treatment profession. Erin is a community activist, consumer advocate. Um, she works on environmental cases throughout the world and consumer products cases throughout the world for communities much like this. We are on the road together far too much, and <laughs> we uh, uh, want to make this your meeting. And so that's the most important thing that we can convey to you tonight. Aaron and I are not attorneys. There are a lot of good attorneys here in West Virginia. Um, there are a lot of good attorneys here in the Charleston area, in the greater Charleston area. Um, we do work with attorneys. All of you are very familiar with the movie Aaron Brockovich. And, and we have the science team that's deployable on these types of cases immediately. So we'll answer legal questions, not from a lawyer's perspective, just from over 20 years experience dealing with cases much like this. And there are our own personal experiences. They are not legal advice. So with that, I'd like to ask Aaron to come up and talk to you a little bit about um, the fact that you've reached out to her. Aaron's received over 30,000 hits on her email and over 2,000 of you have signed up for updates on the webpage. So thank you very much for that. And we will continue not only today, but days coming, um, keeping you apprised of what's going on from our perspective. With that, Aaron, can you come up and share with these people? Still don't have water. 
um, to very, very, very short notice. We got into town last night, so we had to move really quickly this morning in hopes that we could have any place to have a community meeting to answer any of your questions. And the weather's kind of thick. So everybody that is here tonight, thank you very much. We're monitoring Facebook and my website, and we're very, very comfortable that people, even though they couldn't be here, who said they wanted to be here, are getting to the website. We posted information last night on how to better protect yourself as the water comes back online. We are going to send out newsletters. As Bob told you, we've had 2,000 people and 5,000 from your community who have already reached out to us that want the newsletter so we can continue to update you as the story unfolds. We've been doing this for 20 plus years and we see what happens and no one's gonna stand up here and, and do a bunch of bashing because that's not gonna do any good and that's not what it's about. But we certainly have some very specific opinions about information that sometimes you can't get that will be helpful to you. My job is to provide you as much information and much awareness as I can so you can make the best decisions for you and your family, and that's what's most important to me. So that's some of the stuff that we'll be talking about tonight, and I do appreciate you coming out, and I was very happy that the community outreached, and even though we go home tomorrow, we're not gone. As I said, this situation will unfold over time. Getting the water back online is a process, and even once it is online, we highly recommend you continue to drink bottled water until we have more answers about this chemical, what the levels are. It will still be in the water system. So I think that everybody is monitoring that, but no answers are absolute right after a situation like this, especially when the water is still not on. For us, the frustration is that this even happened it is significant here because one, it's a municipality, 300,000 people impacted. We've never seen that before. We know very little about this chemical. But this is a problem that plays itself and plagues us throughout the United States. There are tank farms like this across the U.S that are not properly inspected, that result in disasters such as this, not to this scale, but every single day we deal with a situation like this to a smaller magnitude, maybe 300 people, maybe 3,000 people. And it's become a really serious problem. You know, we have found out that the last inspection that was done on this company and that tank farm was in 1991. That's a long time. And we're certainly out there, but we want you to be out there, and we want you to be proactive. This is your community and your rights and your water, and you have every right to be very vocal about the situation. It's 2014, and to move forward successfully, businesses have got to stop the practices that they have had throughout the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s that we see no longer works. It cannot be money first, safety second. It has got to be safety first and money second. And we've got to change our business practices. So it's been a long time since anybody looked at that tank farm. We don't know a lot of information yet. We will eventually get it. We'll come back if the community asks us to come back and there will be ongoing concerns. Um, people are concerned about their health. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. They're concerned about the chemical and the one PPM set, so we're gonna talk about that. And again, like Bob said, we're here tonight for you. So when you go home, you feel better informed. When you're more informed, you feel more in control of your own life. And you have the skills to get yourself through this problem. Uh, I talk about this a lot, and it's common sense. If the water smells funny, if the water tastes funny, if the water looks funny, don't drink the water. 